adding fur to the stilts. First, I'm going to have to give form for the fur to stick to. I started out by hacking off an old block of furniture foam. It's the same length as the toes, but I need to cut it to shape. So, I'll start out by hacking four, well, three lines into the foam, making four sections, and then I'll really work those, hack into them, make them deeper, wider, and eventually, by taking the foam and hacking at it and snipping, I'll start getting a form to these toes. Like this. Then it's a simple matter of hot gluing it to the toe. Just sticking the fur on the foam doesn't look too impressive. I'm going to cut the fur really, really short in between the toes to allow it to fold more tightly and look like the toes are individual. When I do that, I'm not just going to go through and go do all three cuts at once because the way the foam sits with the hair will be changed by cutting the hair shorter. So I'm going to do one toe at a time, reevaluate, do the next toe, reevaluate, do the last toe. Now that I've cut the fur in the toes and glued them into place with hot glue, I'm going to use paint in order to get them to blend in even better. So I'm going to shake up my paint really well and then just dip my brush in the top. When you paint this fake fur, you want to use the dry brush technique. That means you take your brush, dip it in the paint, work it in, make sure it's nice and dry and sticky, and don't get too much paint on the brush. Then paint it in and blend it. Use your fingers if you want to. So I can go through like this for each toe and very quickly have a nice deep shadowy crevice. I just said crevice. Now that I've got the toes painted, they look a lot better. Notice that I left enough slack so that the toes can go through their full range of motion without pulling on any of the material. I cut the claws out of really thick, fun foam, and then I rounded off the edges because that makes them look a little bit more real. To glue them, I move the fur away from a point on the toe, exposing the weave. That way I can glue it directly to the mesh that holds the fake fur on. I add some hot glue to the back of the foam. Then just hold it in place. I'm pinching up a little of the extra material around it so it's got a nice firm grip on the fur. Well, it's still warm, I can readjust it a little bit. So that's pretty good. Notice that the claws are in an arc instead of in one straight line. By putting them in an arc or at least different heights, it's going to look a lot more natural. Here's the furred stilt. We've already looked at the toes. Now I'm going to show you the rest of the foot and the ankle. We're probably going to pad the back here to make it look a little more realistic, but what you're seeing is just the attachment of the fur. So we've got the fur in two sleeves. A sleeve down here and a sleeve down here. Let's see, where do they meet? See right here? Just glued in place. Now we have our uh, Velcro seams to hold it on the leg in the front. Could you turn and show them the front? Okay. We have Velcro up here holding it to the uh, top of the brace. And then some Velcro closures here, here, and here, holding it closed. Then this whole thing falls backwards. And there's two Velcro closures here and here that allow us to get to the foot. Notice the last bit of Velcro on the tongue of the sneaker and the inside of the sleeve. Here's the side of the stilt with all of the sharp edges from the zip ties and the metal. In order to keep those from ripping through the fur, what we did is covered them in electrical tape. Uh, several layers seem to do really, really well and helps protect the fake fur. 
Now, when I say sleeve, what I mean is this, a square of fur that's really big that we just wrap in place. Uh, that's the size of the sleeve that's already on there. To make the square piece look round when it's on the leg, the excess that hung in weird places was simply glued and folded. I didn't do any sort of cutting or sewing because the heavy pile of the fur hides all of the folds and glues pretty well. The only other note is that when we did some tests wearing and walking around with the stilts, it didn't look natural enough. So we cut the board back right to where the pivot point is at the back of the shoe. So the ankle's a lot smaller than it appears in this furring video in the final version.